hello everybody you're all so very welcome i'm delighted to have you here thanks very much for coming along um i can see lots of people saying hello to each other in the um in the chat so i am really thrilled that you're here thanks very much for coming um tonight's a night of stories about poems and poems about stories and i'll tell you some stories along the way um when i started off reading and publishing in poetry i used to feel really guilty that um my poems were all narrative they all had a story behind them but um i've just gotten used to it now i've met enough poets whose work i love who do the same as me enough poets whose work i love who don't do it but they say that they enjoy it when poets do so i am uh, delighted to have some poems for you tonight about stories and um, tonight is in aid and in honor of 10 by 9 a small arts company that paul and i started up years ago and I'm technically the charitable director of. And uh, thank you very much uh, for supporting this with buying a ticket. We're really thrilled. Um, Paul's going to come on for about six or seven minutes at one point. Um, a little bit into this, we're going to have a little chat about 10 by 9. I'm going to interview him. And um, he has some extraordinary reasons why 10 by 9 was such an important thing for him as a journalist to be doing. And um, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, the poems that we've got tonight are um, going to be poems about history, um, poems too about masculinities, um, you know, the, the tender kind and the toxic kind, poems about mythology and particularly within the context of the poems tonight, I'm going to think of the mythologies that come from religion. And I use mythology in a way to say mythologies are story, stories that are so true, we have to hang them onto something fantastical in order to make them um, true. And um, then there's going to be poems about power and then poems about the imagination. Um, today is All Souls Day uh, across lots of the world and in Ireland, certainly November is the month of the dead. And tonight I'm going to be reading a few new poems about the beloved Glenn Jordan. I know there's some people inside the room who knew and loved Glenn, some family members too. So there's going to be some poems about him just to let you know. Um, to start off with, I'm going to read a poem um, based on a time when I was over in Birmingham in England and I'd just done an exam and me and my friend decided we're going to skip the afternoon lectures on theology and um, we are going to go off and have a few pints. And so we went off to have a few pints. We went into this pub in England, <clears throat> in Birmingham. We paid absolutely no attention to where we were in Birmingham or what kind of a pub it was. And I said, the first round is on me because it was a sunny Saturday afternoon. And um, my friend Martin sat down and I went up and to the bar and ordered a couple of pints. And I went to pay with um, sterling. We were in England. Of course, it was sterling. But um, British money can come in various forms and the banks in the north of Ireland can make their own sterling. So you can get Bank of Ireland sterling, you get Allied Irish Bank sterling, Northern sterling. Um, same in Scotland, the Bank of Scotland will make their own sterling. And often in England, um, places in England will say, well, this isn't sterling, it's Scottish money or it's Irish money. And people are going, well, actually, no, it is technically sterling. And um, lots of us get frustrated when we're over in England and that happens. And this is exactly what happened. This poem is called Enjoy Your Pint. Enjoy Your Pint. At the bar in an unknown part of Birmingham, I bought two pints and paid with paper money from the northern part of Ireland. That's not British money, the publican said. And I said, yes, it is. You'll see the royal head if you hold it to the light. And a man standing right beside me turned to me and looked and said, so you're from northern Ireland. He was wearing denim jeans and a denim jacket, tobacco fingers fixed around a half-drunk pint. He locked his eyes on me and moved so near I could have kissed him. Whose side are you on, son, he whispered. Whose side are you on? And I didn't know the landscape of belonging in this part of England. I hadn't seen signs enough to know whether his hope flew for the orange or the green. He continued to look. He continued to keep close. And I said, I hope for peace. And he said, that's a clever answer, son. That's a very clever answer. 
And I said, I know. Enjoy your point. And I got up to go. The history of Britishness and Irishness in the context of the island of Ireland is a long and complex one. Some people will say, oh, you can start that story 100 years ago. Other people will say, you can start that story 700 years ago. We are with each other, though, on this island. And the question is, is how can we remain with each other? That will be a democratic question. There'll be questions as to whether uh, United Ireland happens or not sometime in the next 10 or 15 years, presumably. And while I'm clear that I would want that, I'm also clear that I would want nobody to die in the context of about how questions about sovereignty continue, because there's been too many people who died so far in the name of different Britishnesses or Irishnesses.